said last night at an early time that already 400 people plus had uh, made their way around Casket, Pleasant View, at Austin and Bell. The funeral will be at 2 o'clock today. And right at the close of this service, we're going to have an altar of prayer for Lynette's twin sister that she just mentioned that the cancer is back to the vengeance. And uh, we want to remember her. Doctors can't do everything, but I know a man who can. And uh, we certainly want to pray for each other. I have some very special friends here today. And, um, probably 90% of you will know by name Virginia Sneed. Especially those of you that are familiar with the Robertson County Times. We're glad to have her and Leslie and uh, her Virginia grandchildren that we help raise some in the daycare. And uh, they moved away. But the last few years we've got in contact uh, through a death, of course, a funeral that I preached. Uh, Frank Sneed and uh, Virginia won't mind me telling this been a month or two ago I got a phone call and it was her and we talked quite a while and she just told me how close she had got to the Lord and how much she had loved Sunday school some of you need to hear her testimony and uh, she just said, I had to call and tell you that you're the reason that I've got closer to the Lord. And that brings tears to my eyes and tears of joy. Because that's what I wanted, is to bring people closer to the Lord. I've learned to love this family through the years. And uh, you'll always remember Leslie, her beautiful daughter, when you go out those doors at night and it real lit up right there in the foyer. She donated that chandelier that's hanging out there. And uh, we appreciate that so much. I think of her probably more than you because I picked it up and brought it here. <laughs> Somebody else put it up. I didn't climb that high. But uh, this family meant a lot to our church when they were here. And I appreciate them so much driving as far as they did this morning to surprise them. And it is a surprise, but it's always good to see people that you love. And I sat with them at the hospital uh, several days during a rough time to be on it. And they've done things for me and I'd certainly do anything I could to help them. But welcome to our service. We pray for me. Second Timothy chapter 2, I'm going to read verses 4 through 12. And I'm going to take a verse, and I promise to have you out of here because of the funeral on time. But uh, I'm going to give you the skeleton of this message, and we'll put some meat on it tonight, and also a little bit today. Second Timothy. Chapter 2, starting with verse 4, reading through verse 12. No one serving, and by the way, this is the new Bible somebody gave him. Um, King James, 
the new revised standard version, and so this is just the second time I've preached out of this Bible. But it says, no one serving in the army gets entangled in everyday affairs. The soldier's aim is to please the enlisted officer. And in this case, of a uh, and in and in the case of the uh, athlete, no one is crowned without completing according to the rules. It is the farmer who does the work who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I've said. For the Lord will give you understanding in all things. Remember Jesus Christ. That's going to be my title. Remember Jesus Christ in verse 8. Raised from the dead, a descendant of David, that is my gospel for which I suffer hardship even to the point of being uh, chained like a criminal. But the Word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory the saving is sure if we have died with him we will also live with him if we endure we will also reign with him would you pray with me? our father we thank you for being able once again to kneel behind this sacred desk. Lord, almost 50 years we've been able to kneel and pray. One day you'll call us home, we'll preach our life's message here. But Lord, we're longing for the day to hear the trumpet sound. We're longing for the day when we will hear the archangel proclaim time shall be no more. We're longing for the day when you call your children home. And Father, we're so close to it. We feel it. Almost the excitement in the air. And I pray that everybody under the sound of my voice today will be ready when their time comes. Bless everything that's said and done. Be with the Meadows family, Lord, today and comfort them through the next several weeks. About every family here has gone through something like this in their lifetime. We thank you for our visitors and pray that you'll bless them May the trip be well worth their while. Speak to us and help me, Lord, to preach the Word of God. For without you, I can do nothing. For it's in Jesus' name I pray and ask Thank these you, Amen. Amen. <coughs> One, two, two. Think with me. Remember Jesus Christ. I have thought many times there's people that you will pass in this world that you will never forget. There's some that you wish you could forget, but uh, you still can't forget those. But I want you to, as I go through this, remember Jesus in a good way in a way that He wants us to remember Him. And 
So Marcus will rest easy. I just have four points, not seven. And uh, I pray that the Lord will help you uh, get this message. Paul was writing to young Timothy. He was telling him to remember Jesus. Paul knew that Timothy could succeed if he would just remember who called him to the job, and that was Jesus. I won't take but a second, but I have to remind myself every once in a while how I got here because I knew being a young man with three little girls and a wife and <coughs> not the education that I needed when I walked in the college on West End Avenue to speak to the register that there wasn't a Chinaman's chance, whatever that is, of me making it in the college <coughs> or getting through but Dr. Pickle really said something to me that I'll never forget. Okay. He sat across his desk and he said these words. He said, Ronnie, I'll tell you what we will do. We will take you for a semester. <coughs> and if you can do it, we will keep you. And if you can't do it, we'll be honest with you and tell you, you just pack up, go back to North Carolina. For there's no use you wasting your money or our time. But the last words he said convinced me I was where I needed to be. He said, if God has called you, <coughs> Jesus will provide. And four years later, I walked across that stage, was handed a diploma, and my bill was paid without any government assistance. That's when you know God's in it. When you can't afford it and it's paid for when you're through it. And I'll never forget receiving letters from people that I can't remember and opening them up in just a note. God told me that you needed this and maybe it's a $50 bill. Could have been a $100 bill. Could have been $20 bills. But when I walked across, every penny went toward my college and it was paid for. And it's good to know people. Uh, I remember going into Centennial Hospital and being a pastor even sometimes you don't get to go for you need to go and getting there late and could have been some of you been quite a while ago but Leslie was the head nurse in the ER and I thought when I couldn't get to the person that I needed to I wondered if she was there so I go back to the ER and sure enough she sees me comes around and she said, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm looking for so-and-so, but they won't let me. So she put her hand under my arm and told her crew, she said, I'll be back in a little while. And she took me to places that I couldn't have got. It's who you know. One day Jesus Christ took me by the hand and he led me to places that I couldn't have got to and that I couldn't have got through. But He opened the doors. And He says that in His book. I open the door and no man can shut it. And I'll shut the door and no man can open it. And so if Jesus be for you, who can be against you? And the closer you get to the Lord Jesus, the better off you will be. And you'll know that you're doing what you ought to do. And then we see that we too can succeed as soldiers of the cross if we but remember who called us, who died for us. And He's not asking us to die for Him, folks. 
He's asking us to live for Him. He said, I want you to live for me. I was willing to die for you. And that way people will see me in you. The hope of glory. And so, number one, when in trouble, and I'm looking at this group and I don't see nobody that's ever been in trouble. Of course, I ain't had my glasses changed in a while either. I still can't see through it. But when you're in trouble, remember Jesus. He can help you when nobody else can. And I'm going to give you several verses of Scripture and won't have time to read them today, but in Psalm 46, 1, 1 Peter 5, 7, John 14 and 1, He is interested in us. He's concerned about us. He's anxious to help us. The Bible tells us, look upon the hills from which cometh our help. And it's Jesus Christ. When we get in trouble and we feel that there's no hope, we can look to Him. For He gives us strength to make it through some hard times. And without Him, I don't know how people make it. The Bible tells us that when we're tempted to remember Jesus Christ, for the Bible said Jesus was tempted in every way like we're tempted, and yet without sin. Jesus says when we're tempted that He makes a way that we can bear it and we can get through it. But it looks like we can't if we keep our eyes on Him and we stay focused on Him. He's going to give us the strength, the help. He's going to give us a way where there seems to be no way. We'll get through it if we stay with Him. So remember, when tempted, Jesus Christ is on our side and if He made it, you and I can make it and that's found in Hebrews 5 and 15 and 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. Satan can do no work in the presence of Jesus Christ. Oh, Satan's probably uh, the second strongest uh, in this universe but did you notice I said second? There was a great war that happened in this universe. You can read about it in Job chapter 3. You can read about where there was war in heaven. You can read about where Michael the archangel challenged Satan or Satan challenged him. And you can read about where Satan was cast out of heaven. Behold, I saw Satan like lightning cast out of heaven. The heartbreaking thing is a third of the angels followed. That's hard for me to believe that a third of the angels would leave heaven and follow Satan. But it's hard for me to believe that people that claim to be Christians and know the Word of God can turn their back on it and go out into the world. But the God of this world has blinded their mind, blinded their eyes, and they just are not looking at Jesus. There's a way that seems right to man, but the end thereof is destruction. But Jesus will lead us the right way. He will guide us the right way. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He will be with us always, even to the end. And so, don't forget Jesus. When you make it through something, don't look around and say, like the old Dominator chicken when she lays the egg, look, 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 look what I done. <laughs> you know? Look what He did. He did it for us. He gave us the strength to do it. 
He helps us do it. And we need to praise Him when we accomplish something because through Him we live and move and have our being. Not through ourselves. And we see in the third thing, keeping our eyes on Jesus, when in sorrow, remember Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, in Psalms 23, one of the diamonds of the Bible, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because Jesus is with me. And we can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil because there's no greater power walking with us than Jesus. Satan can't overcome him. Satan cannot overcome the blood. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And I want to tell you, when Satan sees the blood, he has to pass over you too. That's a good part. And we see, not only in Psalms 23, when we're down in the valley of sorrow, I love the song that Nicole sings, that the God of the mountain is still God in the valley. I know a lot of you have been on the mountain. And I know probably 99.9% .9 of us have been in a valley. But God is there with us. Never alone are the least of His children. He is there with us. So we think about it. We think about the hymn that expresses it so well and we think of Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 and 29 but the hymn says Jesus knows all about our struggles he will guide us till the day is done there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus no not one no, not one. The best friend that you ever had or ever will have is named Jesus Christ. He won't leave you. He will comfort you. He will hold you up when you think you can't take another step. He will help you take that other step. He will never leave you, He says, or forsake you. And then the fourth thing that I want you to see and remember Jesus Christ by is this. <coughs> when you have experienced failure, you ever experienced failure? I tell you, and I could spend the rest of the time telling you about great men that have almost made it an experience great faith. But they get up and go again. And they would succeed. Read the story about Paul's life. How many times he was shipwrecked. How many times he was beat. How many times that he was at the point of death. And I could see him get up and brush himself off and go right back to preaching Jesus Christ. He won't leave us and neither shall we leave him. Peter denied the Lord Jesus Christ three times. Jesus looked Peter in the eye and said, Peter, before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. <clears throat> and Peter said, I'll not deny you. But you know that story. When the young maiden went out and said, you're one of his. The Bible says that Peter cursed and swore and said, I don't know the man. 
Peter did that three times. The third time, the Bible says, Peter denied him, and the Lord looked straight at him. How do you think Peter felt? I tremble now to think how he felt. Now they have brought Jesus Christ and they've crucified Him. And on the third day He arose. I don't know who He was talking to. I meant to look that up this morning. But let me remind you of what He said when He rose from the dead. He said, after the resurrection, Jesus said, Go tell my disciples that I've rose from the dead. But that ain't where that sentence ends. And he said, Oh, by the way, tell Peter too. Do you understand what he was saying? Tell Peter, the one that denied me three times, that I rose. I still love him. I'm still going to help him. I'm living again. That sends cold chills through me. I don't know how much you know about church history, but church history says that when Peter realized what the Lord had really done for him and that he was crucified on the cross, Peter surrendered his life to the Lord Jesus. And when it come time for Peter's death, Peter was crucified on the cross. Upside down. He said, I'm not worthy to be crucified right side up. And he asked to be crucified upside down. You know, Peter really fell in love with Jesus Christ. And church, if you and I could fall in love with Jesus the way the church and people fall in love with this world, we could change this world for the good. He says, Go tell my disciples and Peter. God forgave Jonah. He told Jonah to go to Nineveh, that wicked city, one of the most wicked cities on the face of the earth, and to preach the Word of God to them. Jonah went down to the port and there was a boat going to Nineveh. But Jonah decided, I'm not going to go the way Jesus said to go. I, which one's going the other way? And so he wanted to go the other way. Folks, you can't run from Jesus. You try to run from Him, you'll run straight into Him. Might be the midnight hour that you'll face Him. He forgave Jonah. And don't have time to go through the whole story, but 
Some people call it a will, and the Bible calls it in one place a will, but it says in the beginning that God created a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah spent three days and nights in the belly of that fish. And when that fish vomited him out on the bank, he didn't look for another ship going to where God told him to go. He ran all the way there. Probably out on a horse. <laughs> and he preached till that city turned to God. You see, it might look too hard for us. What he puts in front of us might look too hard. And, and we say, Lord, why me? You might be the only one that can do it. But he never asked, like Dr. Picker really told me, sitting on West End Avenue, if God's called you, He'll never call you to do something that you cannot do with His help. Remember, He forgave Jonah. In Philippians 3, 13 and 14, and then make a new start. We're, we just now came out of January, just now in February. Make a new start for this year. People make resolutions all the time, and I think some of them last six hours. Some of them are broke before you get home. But start this year with Christ. Remember Jesus in your resolutions. Satan will use your past failures against you. Satan will use them and he'll say, you fell once, you'll fail again. Get up like Paul did, brush yourself off and say, I'm going to try this again. Remember, Satan is a liar and the truth's not in him. Do not listen to Satan. Even in your failures, let me share this with you in closing. Even in your failures, what did Christ say? I will be with you always. Even to the end. Remember that. Christ loves you. And He's anxious to help you. Remember Jesus. If you forget everything that I've said today, don't forget these words. Remember Jesus. And everything that you do, an old colored preacher told me this one time, when I was asking him about a question over in South Nashville, on 9th Avenue back when I was in college and I had an insurance debit down in there. And I'd always stop and talk to that preacher much older than me and probably gone home now. And I'd say, what do I need to do? And he says, you got a book called the Bible? And I said, yes, there are several. He said, that's what you need to do, is to listen to what's on these pages. The greatest love letter ever written was written from an old rugged cross by Jesus Christ. 
in its deliver on us. Remember Jesus. It changed my life finding the Bible in the trash pile. Just remember Jesus. Would you stand with me and we'll have a word for you. I was just reminded by Nicole that uh, we're going to have an altar of prayer for Lynette's twin sister whose cancer's come back for the vengeance. So we'll use that as our closing means. And if you know the Lord and you know the power of prayer, would you join us around this altar? And let's pray for her and Others that maybe you know that really need prayer. I think there's power in prayer. Sometimes Jesus is the only one that will understand. And we can pray with him. Kenny to pray and Brother Dickie and then I'll close and the rest of you pray as you feel led. Okay.
And we know, Father, that there's nothing that you can't do. And we pray if it's your will that you'll touch this body that's got this cancer and call a halt to the cancer. Lord, we thank you for the hope that we have in glory. A hope even after this life. And we do pray again for Malcolm and his family. Speak to those that might not know you. Lord, we thank you for, for Jim and Leslie being with us today and their family. What a blessing they've been to this preacher. Father, I pray that you'll encourage them even more. And may every one of us that's heard the sound of my voice today, halfway around the world, remember you when we come into trouble and heartache and problems. You can do what we can. You can be who we cannot be. Lord, there's times we'd just like to bring you here and say, you take the service. We'd like to sit you down and talk to you and say, why? God, strengthen our faith and help us not to question you. For the Bible says, you do all things well. Help us not to question that. But help us to believe it with everything that's in our soul. Go with us. Make us a light in the dark world. And may your will be done in all of our hearts and minds. And we'll thank you for all that you do. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.